like to welcome everybody to the October meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. At this time, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the prayer and pledge of allegiance, and Eddie Miller is going to lead us in that. Eddie? All right, sir. Please bow your head. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the many blessings that you give us. We hope that you uh, watch over all those that are less fortunate in the world. Help there be peace uh, and love amongst everyone. Help us to make good decisions today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Eddie. Everybody should have received their packet earlier in the week. Um, the minutes from our September meeting were contained in that packet. This time we'll entertain any changes or corrections that need to be made. If there aren't any, uh, motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. We'll move now to new business. Uh, first item is a consideration of resolution 15R37 in regard to alcoholic beverages policies for Bradley Academy Museum and Cultural Center. And uh, Lanny, we'll turn it over to you guys. Kelly, I think you're doing this one too? Yes. yes. Um, this one is just coming to you to amend the Parks and Rec Department's rules and regulations regarding alcoholic beverages to allow um, alcoholic beverages at a special events held at the Bradley Academy Museum. Um, there may be some special events, fundraisers, wedding receptions that could be held there where individuals may want to have wine or beer at the facility. Okay. And Mr. Chair, this follows the same protocol same, that same we Same policy use. that we have, it just adds this facility. Yes, it, just adds it does. Okay. Any questions? There are none, we need a motion for approval. So moved. Thank you, Ricky. Second. And a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Kelly, thank you. Item number two, Allison Davidson's here and is going to tell us about the Roll With It program at SportsCon. Allison, welcome. Well, I'm just here today for your approval for a new program that we're going to be doing in January. And it's simply just a program where you, um, everyone gets a package of these massage balls. And it's just a class where we're going to kind of teach you how to use them, kind of learn how to do a little self-massage on your own so you don't have to go out and have, spend a lot of money, have it done a lot all the time. So. This, um, the price is $20. Pretty much it's basically just to include the balls because you do get these as part of the program so that you know, we don't have to have to share balls with other people because of sanitary reasons. So um, just like to submit that for your approval. Okay. Any questions of Allison regarding this program? Allison, how many folks can we have? Well, this time around, since it's a new program, I just pre-ordered 10 balls, so there will be a, a limit there, so we'll have a registration prior to the class for that. If it winds up turning out really well, then you know, we can do a, another class, but the small number also kind of helps me so that I can work with people in a somewhat more individual basis, so if somebody's doing something wrong, I can catch them, so they're not like, you know, rolling it up their throat or something. So right now we have a limit. Okay. Any other questions? If there are none, we need a motion for approval of the program as presented. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Allison, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Item three is a consideration of the dodgeball tournament at SportsCom. Thomas Laird is going to tell us all about it. Thomas, welcome. Uh, as many of you know, uh, we've had a, a, a really good relationship with Dick Sporting Goods over the last several years. And as I was meeting with our representative to renew our agreement for the upcoming year, uh, we decided we needed to enhance the sponsorship and decided to come up with an event that would help that. Uh, popular uh, events and and competitions that are happen, happen throughout town and across the country as dodgeball tournaments. 
And so uh, the representatives from Dick Sporting Goods thought that would be a great event for them to be a title sponsor of. So we've established a dodgeball tournament at Sportscom. Our target audience is the upper teens, but we'll have a division for younger kids as well. Uh, we'll use rhino skin dodgeballs, which are a high density foam with a, a really thin rubber cover. So they're very safe. Uh, try to reduce the injuries. It's, it's not the old school playground balls that we were accustomed, <laughs> accustomed to. Uh, but we'll take teams of five players each. Uh, we can, the first year we'll limit it to about 40 teams, keeping it to about 200 participants. Uh, the fees for the tournament would be $20 per team. Uh, and the winning teams, each participant for the winners would win a $50 gift certificate from Dick Sporting Goods. Second place would be a $20 gift certificate and $10 for third. Uh, they will also be providing door prizes uh, and will give us access to additional dodgeballs if we need them for supplies. So I'm here today to get approval on uh, the $20 fee. We've set a tentative date for December 5th, but we want to reach out to all the high schools and, and get a feedback from uh, our target audience to make sure we pick the correct date to get maximum participation. All right. Any questions of Thomas regarding this? No, dodgeball tournament. If there are none, we need a motion for approval as presented. So moved. So moved. All right, thanks, Ricky. Mm -hmm. And a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. And we encourage the commission to put in a team. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, we're going to go ahead and do yours. Yeah, we'll let Becky go last. We'll say, we always say Becky for last. Come on, Nate. We're, we've got a new addition uh, the, to the agenda. Um, everybody should have, have this map that was provided uh, in their spot today. Um, Nate Williams is here, and he is going to give us an update on a proposed uh, Cannonsburg Village Improvement Project. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could uh, just kind of lead off. Uh, uh, we've been working on this for some time, uh, updating the master plan. We've got a lot of partners uh, at Cannonsburg, and um, they've expressed some interest and concerns about uh, the layout of the grounds and how we can make those better. Uh, we have a lot of special events. And so uh, what we've done is we've been working with Lowson Associates. Uh, we've hired them to remaster plan Cannonsburg. Uh, Nate has had several stakeholder meetings. Uh, and we have a uh, preliminary site schematic uh, that we feel really good about for Cannonsburg. We wanted to present it to the commission today uh, for your input. And there are some areas that we want to go ahead and uh, implement. Uh, we have some money in our uh, capital improvements program. Uh, but before we did that, we wanted to get a reaction from the commission, let Nate go over the master plan pretty much in detail, and tell you what changes we've made and uh, just how we have improved uh, the flow for pedestrian traffic, vehicular traffic, uh, the things that we've added for special events, et cetera. So without stealing all of his yeah. thunder, I'll let Nate go ahead from there. To give you a brief history, Cannonsburg opened to the public in 1976, on June 26, 1976. That means in 2016 we'll be celebrating Cannonsburg's 40th anniversary. Uh, while staff have been really able to maintain grounds and buildings very well, um, the original walkways and fencing had deteriorated rapidly, uh, causing some safety concerns for us. On February 5th, 2014, this commission approved to enter an agreement with Blos and Associates to develop a master plan to address immediate safety concerns and along with long-term adjustments to the village. Since then, Lowson and Associates have worked closely with staff uh, to develop a master plan that really sets short-term and long-term visions for the village. Uh, Throughout this process, the theme for this project has been increased security, access, and functionality uh, for Cannonsburg. On June 11th of this past year, we had a stakeholders meeting at Cannonsburg to review and uh, discuss the draft master plan. And we've been meeting with these partners and neighbors of Cannonsburg 
uh, for a long time leading up to this process, but we had our most recent draft, the one right before this one. Uh, we met with the JC's Club, the Lions Club, Blacksmiths Association, Antique Auto, the Art League, and other neighbors in proximity to Cannonsburg. So the draft you have in front of you is a result of a long process that we believe is optimal for Cannonsburg, like I said, both short-term and long-term sustainability. Uh, a few highlights of the plan include fencing off sections of the village uh, that we can do small section, the ability to fence off sections of the whole village, and also be able to fence off the entire grounds, which that's really be beneficial for a lot of our bigger events, such as Uncle Dave making days, Harvest Days, Pioneer Days, and our barbecue festival at Cannonsburg. And it also helps us attract some of the bigger events that want to partner with Cannonsburg to host their event. Um, it also includes a new designated entrance to the village you can see on the map where we used to enter off of Hickerson and go to the main entrance. The new main entrance will eventually be the parking lot, uh, which will make the McKnight House the new gift shop um, for the village and the information point for the village. Accessibility has been really increased throughout the whole village uh, with better walkways, designated walkways, designated roadways. Uh, in repairing a lot of the ways that we go and flow through and out the village, including an additional bridge so for large festivals we can, people can make the route around without having to cut through the middle of the village. It also includes relocation of the cedar bucket in a safe manner so we can display that appropriately. Right now it's a little bit hidden after we had it uh, revived in 2011. And it also uh, implements permanent staging um, over in the field that where we host all of our major concerts. There'll be permanent staging there and then on the other side of the village. Um, it's got a, a lot of other adjustments. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have or you see right there. One of the things we're really excited about is the possibility of transferring the museum into a reception area. That would give us an advantage for uh, some of our events, reservations, meeting spaces, possibly rotating art uh, gallery area, really multi-purpose facility if we can do that eventually. So. Those are just a few highlights. I'm sure you might have questions that either myself or Mr. Goodwin can answer, uh, and I'd be glad to do that at that time. Otherwise, we're seeking approval to go ahead and approve this draft of this uh, master plan. Questions of Nate or Lanny regarding the Kansberg master plan? Hey, Nate, yes, the, the stage area, how many people can we seat? There. Which stage area are you speaking the of? The one in the back. Number two. The one in the back. Two. That wasn't specified. Um, you're talking about the one where it says where the caboose is the backdrop for yeah, right the, over by the train. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. that shows the caboose is going to be the backdrop for that stage eventually, and it moves it so we can have uh, the walkway between the chapel and the reception area. Uh, that being said, I'm not sure, Mr. Miller. I can check on that to see exactly. I'm sure they able to quantify that. I would say at least 300 in that area, yeah, though. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and, and significantly more in the other grassy area. You've right. seen there during our big festivals, but I can mm -hmm. get you an exact number if you'd like mm -hmm. that. I like that. I think it really helps us. This one of the things when we come back to functionality. Like I said, we had three, you know, items in mind: security, access, and functionality. Um, and functionality for daily programs, daily operation for tours, along with. The ability to function as a huge festival and be able to shut the whole grounds down so we can gate those festivals. Um, so we're really excited. If you ask me, you know, what we'd like to get going on, like Mr. Goodwin had indicated, we really need to start addressing our walkways at Cannonsburg. They're deteriorating uh, now, it seems, over the past couple of years really rapidly. We need to get those fixed along with our, our gates and our fences uh, that need to be addressed. So that's what we'd like to really jump on pretty quickly. Okay. Nate, the. Uh roadway where the vendor set up at the Uncle Dave making days with yes, the uh, food trucks and stuff through there. Hickerson uh, Drive is up. Right. Yes, sir. I, I see that several places behind there we're trying to appear to put a focus on trying to get some shaded area because generally it's so hot that time of year. Did you consider trees along Hickerson there at all uh, to try and get some shade into that area to try and cool it off because it, with it being paved and it being a very heavily traveled sure. area, it uh, it almost looks like a, if if we're going to plant these trees, and I really don't know why the Lions Club or the JCs would be opposed to having some trees across the front there, mm -hmm. um, might be something to consider. You know, that's a, that's a good point. Those squares represent demonstration areas, ten by ten demonstration areas or vendor areas that can be used. But right, I'll mark that down. I think that's a, a great concept. To answer your question, that, that hadn't been discussed, but it's a good point. 
um, the front of the um, um, that building, the visitor center, is going to operate as our third stage as a possibility. A lot of the big festivals and events that come in want multiple stages, and we've been able to use that as a, th as a stage recently, and that's designated. So as long as it wouldn't impede on that stage, which I don't see it being, right. I'll take that recommendation back. Yeah, I, and truly, I don't think it would interfere with uh, the stage, nor there's just almost no place you can go to get out of the sunlight sure. when you're over there in the middle sure. of the day and it's 100 degrees outside and it looks like a good opportunity if we're going to be putting some trees around the side in the back there that we might plant three or four maybe across the front there to kind of cool that area off a little bit. Absolutely. Any other questions for Nate? Looks like a great project. Yeah, we're, we're very excited about it. Like I said, it's been a long process. We've been really uh, diligent in working with the stakeholders. We have a lot of partners at Cannonsburg that we work with on a daily basis, so we wanted to make sure to include them in the process. And like I said, the last meeting that we had on June 11th was everybody combined to get their comments and uh, really overwhelming support of where this has ended up at this point. Um, so we feel comfortable now after sending that back to Lowe's and getting that back with, with uh, moving forward with this plan. Do we have a rough idea on just the whole project together on what the total cost would be? Laney, I know once they get, render us our final draft. Uh, that, uh, that was a part of the request. Uh, we were waiting for the final changes, uh, and then they're going to okay. give us an just opinion curious. of the cost. But we'll bring that back to you. We plan to, to look at this over a period of years for phases. Uh, but the first thing first, let's let's address the issues that we've got at hand, the sidewalks, the safety, those kind of things, and then we'll move forward. Sounds good. Are there any other questions? If there are none, we need a motion for approval of the master plan as presented. Move for approval. Thank you, Eddie. Is there a second? Uh, second. All right, Ricky. Thanks. We have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? There is no. We need a motion for approval. <laughs> motion for approval. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion is approved. Can we Sorry. Vote on that now, Dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I spaced out there for a second. <laughs> Becky? As always, we save you for the last to give us an update on the upcoming events. All right. Well, hello, everyone. First, I want to mention before we get into all of our exciting events and programs, I want to make sure that everybody is aware that um, youth basketball registration is now taking place, and that runs um, for the entire month of October. And um, they can register at Sportscom, Patterson, McFadden, and Barfield. And a new addition that we are very excited about is we can take online registrations with credit card payments now. So if somebody is at home right now and wants to sign their child up for youth basketball, they can just go to the Parks and Rec website and there'll be a link for them to click on that will take them to our active uh, registration so they can register online. So, and that is for ages five to 17. It is $50 per player. And we're really trying to encourage people to register online or to visit one of our facilities this month so that we can get uh, everyone signed up for youth basketball. Becky, if you were to register online, would that be a major credit card that you would accept or PayPal or how do you accept payment? It's a credit card, major credit card. Okay. All right, and tomorrow we'd like to invite everybody to the fifth annual McFadden Fall Fest and Haunted Hallways. That's at McFu uh, sorry, McFadden Community Center from 5 to 8 p.m. There'll be a whole lot of activities going on, and it is free. So we encourage everyone to check out McFadden, Fall Fest, and Haunted Hallways. Then starting next week, our Barfield Bash. Um, first, we have Old Scream Road, which is the scariest haunted hayride in the borough. And that starts next Wednesday, October 21st, and it runs Wednesday the 21st through Saturday the 24th. It starts at dark, and they sell tickets until 9 p.m., and it is $5. Then, oh, sorry. Then we also have, as part of the Barfield Bash, the Not-So-Haunted Hayride, 
And this year it is um, featuring the story, The Ghost of Donley Farm. And the Not So Haunted Hayride is Friday and Saturday, October 23rd and 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. It is $4. And then, of course, we have the um, carnival as part of the Barfield Bash. And that is also Friday and Saturday, October 23rd and 24th. And the carnival is from 5 to 9 p.m. both nights. And um, all these at Barfield Bash are held at Barfield Crescent Park. Going the wrong way. All right, then we have the 39th Annual Harvest Days. Um, that is at Cannonsburg Village. It is free to attend. Um, there will be booths and vendors, so if anybody wants to purchase anything from there, there will be a fee for that, but it is free to attend the event. There will be bluegrass music, pottery, clogging, antique auto show, blacksmith de demonstration, and much more. That is Saturday, October 24th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Cannonsburg Village. And then we have our Trick or Treat Fall Celebration and Hayride. That will be Friday, October 30th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Cannonsburg Village. There is a $2 um, per person fee for that, but they'll have games, hayrides, candies, candy, and more activities. So that's Friday, October 30th. Also on Friday, October 30th from 6 to 10 p.m. at Patterson Park Pool is our Spooky Splash. And that is for ages 7 to 13. We do encourage pre-registration, -re pre but you um, can come that evening. If you pre-register, it's $5. If you come that night, it is 7 And that is at Patterson Park Community Center. And for more information on all of our events and programs, you can check out our website at murfreesborotn.gov slash parks. You can download our Rec Connection, which is our fall program guide or um, like one of our Facebook pages. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any questions for Becky on any of the programs? A lot of stuff. Exciting yeah. time. Yes. Thanks for I being here. very busy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Is there any other business to come before the commission? Being none, we stand adjourned.